This will be the third time in three years I've reviewed this exact beer, but allegedly this time it's better than ever. Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes this is indeed the third time I've featured this beer from Blue Monkey on this channel and um, to be honest I wasn't going to do it I heard they released it again and I thought you know what I'm pretty sure I've already featured that once before had a quick look back into my videos and it turns out I'd done it the first year I was on YouTube the second year I was on YouTube and well this is the third year so I thought you know what let's make this a little bit of a long-term series now although I have reviewed this twice before the circumstances were a little bit different. Firstly, this year it's in a new format, i.e. it's in a can rather than a bottle, and the name has changed slightly as a result, although it's the exact same ingredients. As far as I'm aware, it's the same ABV. I'll put it on screen now if that's not the case, because I forgot to check before I hit the record button on the camera just now. But yeah, it is the same beer. They've just repackaged it slightly because it does, to be fair, fit slightly better within their new kind of craft orientated range. Whereas previously it was done in bottle form as per all of their kind of regular more trad offerings under the name of Blue Barb and Custard. But today, as I say, the name has changed and it is now just a rhubarb and custard pale ale coming in at 4.8%. And I have to say, most of you will know that I don't really get very excited by pale ales all that often, but this is one every time it shows up, it's just a must buy for me. And as I said in the intro, allegedly this year, it is just a bit better. Now you might be thinking, how is that the case, given that you've just said it's exactly the same beer and it is the same beer, it's the same ingredients, it's the same process-ish. What they've done is taken the same ingredients and managed to allegedly get a load more flavor out of the rhubarb element, which is something I'm particularly keen on when it comes to this kind of flavour profile. So yeah, it will be interesting to find out. In the second year that I reviewed this beer, it was actually pitched against a different uh, rhubarb and custard pale ale. That one was from Northern Monk, so very similar styles. But anyway, uh, this one reigned supreme then, and I'm hoping that it's gonna reign supreme today as well. No messing around then. Quick look at the can before we break into this beer. It's got the new Blue Monkey craft style, as you would expect. Um, this one's kind of, it's kind of a two-tone shift. I don't know if you can, can you see it there on the can? It kind of goes from orange, red, yellow, bit of green sometimes. It's properly like, it's like chameleon paint. It's, um, it's very cool, it has to be said. Um, spinning it around, all the usual info on the back, which we'll get into a bit later. But yeah, it's hot, I'm thirsty, and this sounds like an absolute treat. Correct glassware, of course. In the glass then, this is just a glorious, it's starting to look quite gold I think on camera, but here in person it's more of a straw coloured, just a faint bit of, um, well, haze to it really. It's got the kind of, you can tell there's some other matter in there. I've talked a lot recently on various videos about, you know, how good Blue Monkey is at doing um, non-adjunct filled beers and getting huge, insane taste profiles out of them. Full disclosure, this is an adjunct beer. They're also a dab hand at working with other things as well, as well as doing it kind of the, uh, let's sort of call it the raw and traditional way, if that's even a thing. You know what I mean? But this is an adjunct beer and you can kind of tell because it's just got a bit of, there's a bit of floaty matter in there and I imagine that's probably come from the raw rhubarb which excites me infinitely. Um, aroma wise, every time, every time I forget how good it is. It smells like rhubarb and custard sweets. It's No, it's better than that. Sat that description off. It's really, it's legitimately, it smells just like a fresh steaming bowl of rhubarb and custard. Like how? How is it that? Yes, 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 yes. I mean, look, we started this video. I've done it before. I liked it then. I, there's a very good chance I'm going to like it now. I like the brewery. We know it kind of feels almost like a pointless video. But once I got told that it was just amped up a bit, I was like, this is this is properly, properly exciting. And that smells properly, properly exciting. So, so far, oh, it's just there. So 
for the benefit of anyone who's not seen the previous reviews, rhubarb is dominant, sweet vanilla custody notes underneath that. If you really dig around, you start to see a few little hop notes in there, but it's really dialed back, really subtle, which for me is probably most of the reason that I think this is such a good pale ale because it's not especially hoppy at all. And you can start to pick out a little bit of biscuity malt, which I'll be honest, infused with that custard and rhubarb gives you something almost akin to like a rhubarb crumble experience. It's just, yes, absolutely yes. I'm not wasting any time here. I'm thirsty. This smells divine. Let's get into it. Cheers. Well, it has changed. I need a moment. Let's not mess around. That is still absolutely scintillating. It's bigger. It's, I don't want to use the word brasher. It's much more flavorful in parts. It has changed a bit of the structure of the beer though, at least from what I remember. Now, trying to compare beers today to ones you had literally a year ago or two years ago is, well, it's not a very fine art, let's be honest. We're very good at misremembering things, but this feels much more summer focused than the previous ones. And what I mean by that is, I think previously it was kind of, the rhubarb and the custard were a little bit evenly matched and it was quite sweet, not too sweet. It still felt like real pale ale. And I think that is something I said in the comparison with the Northern Monk video, whereas the Northern Monk one just felt like kind of sweet shop sweets. It's still got that, but this has gone a little bit crisper, a little bit more like extra pale. It's hyper refreshing as a result. Given that it's a summer special, in terms of an all out package, I've got to say, yeah massive double thumbs up because they have absolutely improved on it for what it should be the previous one might have been arguably a better year all rounder just in the fact that i think you've got a little bit more biscuity malt and a little bit less of that kind of sharp refreshing intensity from kind of both the hop and the rhubarb element but 30 degrees outside again Pull me a cold one of those, which I've just done. I'll be honest, my only... I wish I got this a little bit colder, actually, because it's not really down to temperature. I put it in the fridge this morning, but I think the fridge is probably struggling a bit in this heat. And, yeah, I mean, it tickles. It tickles the taste buds, and it didn't do that before. It's got the really... I mean, it is authentic rhubarb in this. It is legitimate, fresh rhubarb that goes into this. But before, it was just kind of this undertone of it. Now, it even tickles the taste buds, that little bit of an extra sour element. It just goes together to put this hyper-refreshing package together. And, well, I bought six of them, and I have absolutely zero regret. So, yeah, again, massive thumbs up. We will do a very quick top-to-bottom taste test. I would, however, like to talk over the can with you afterwards, so do stick around for that, just because I think there's a few little bit of interesting points we can pick out from the ingredients list. But first, top-to-bottom taste test. So, initially, decently carbonated. A little bit of that hot profile shows itself at the start of the tongue. It's probably intertwining a bit with the rhubarb. You get this kind of slightly citric, slightly sour, just teasing. It's not intense, it's not strong, it's just you know, when you get a soft drink that's not full of sugar, like a, like a robust, proper lemonade, a bit of that right at the front there. And then, first part of the tongue, huge, sweet rhubarb notes. The vanilla is probably coming in a little bit at that point, but it's not huge, it's not massive, you know, the custody thing. However, once that passes, nice, big, I wouldn't call it sweet vanilla, but you get that creaminess, that just, that rich, that looks intensity from the vanilla mingling again with the rhubarb on the back of the tongue it stays together throughout which is what you want and sometimes this style beer or this style taste this taste profile at least can often kind of get split and you get a sharp bit then a sweet bit and it's all a bit kind of separated this one it gels together nicely yes maybe starts a bit sharp at the front but it comes together before the end you swallow it and then nice soft biscuity malt base and there's just a few zingy, slightly acidic, slightly sour notes left again from the rhubarb, from the hop, just kind of peppered around. There's some shortbread notes in there. There's all sorts going on because if you think about it, biscuit, vanilla, the hop value, the rhubarb, it all, and there's a lot of different levels in there, but it does just kind of, it stays well meshed throughout almost. It's not, you know, it's not too harsh in one way or another. Absolutely fantastic beer. Now, 
quick look at the can. So on the front of it, it just says Blue Monkey award-winning craft brewery, rhubarb and custard at 4.8%. It's unfiltered and unfined, which we can kind of tell. But on the back, uh, so the hops are Cascade and Magnum. Ah. Okay, that's where that kind of Cascade will be where a bit of that bit of that citrus is coming from, I would imagine. Um, but the ingredients list is water, malt, wheat, hops, yeast, lactose for that proper custody impact, rhubarb and vanilla. So, as I said, it is an adjunct beer. It's got lactose, rhubarb and vanilla in it. But that's it and these are kind of the raw forms of those things there's no added sweeteners no nothing no nonsense and i have to say that once again you won't find me raving about many pale ales but that one i can absolutely get behind beautiful beautiful summer drink and that really is all i've got to say about it so as always thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video please like it if you haven't already subscribed if you'll be so kind and i'll catch you next time cheers